The 11th gen lineup of Intel CPUs has just been released and with it we have the i9-11900K and the i5-10600K CPU for testing. We do not own any of AMD's offerings apart from the 5950X, so we will be testing generational performance over the 10900K and the performance difference between the 5950X to see who is gaming king. Everything that we show in our test today will be out of box performance. Our test system consists of 32 gigabytes, 3200 megahertz of RAM and an RTX 3090 GPU on the ASUS Z590 Maximus Hero 13 motherboard. Let's start off with productivity. Cinebench R20 was first up and as expected, we saw the 5950X skyrocket ahead, having doubled the cores of the 11900K. The interesting result here is that the 10900K, Intel's 10th gen CPU, was on par with the new 11th gen counterpart. Single core performance is where the 11900K really shines. We have never seen a 600 plus score from Intel in this category. Even the 11600K was 15% faster than the 10th gen flagship 10900K. Blender revealed some interesting results. Dropping the two cores certainly does not favor the Intel 11900K in productivity. As expected, the 5950X beat out the 11900K by 40%, but the 10900K beat out the 11900K, having those two extra cores, by 3-6%. to Again in Corona Benchmark, we saw the 5950X 44% faster than the 11900K, and the 10900K beat out the 11900K by 6%. Our Premiere Pro represents a real-world application some of you may use. As expected, the 5950X came in 10% faster than the 11900K, but we saw the 11600K keeping up with the 11900K. On to our gaming benchmarks. We chose a wide variety of games because we were getting some very interesting results. Starting with Metro Exodus Benchmark. In 1080p high preset, we saw an average of 158 FPS for the 11900K, putting it 4% slower than the 5950X. The 11600K actually beat out the 10900K. The 11600K is shaping up to be a good value CPU for gaming. Shadow of the Tomb Raider Ultra Preset, we saw the 11900K being 12% slower than the 5950X and pretty much within margin of error of the 10900K. We noticed that we we're actually experiencing a bit of a bottleneck here, making the 11900K and 11600K look worse in comparison than it actually is. To prove this, we had to downgrade our GPU to a 3070. And you can see how this margin was closed quite significantly. In fact, the 11600K actually gained more FPS paired with the 3070 as opposed to the 3090. We saw similar results with Red Dead Redemption 2. The 11900K was 20% slower than the 5950X. However, this was greatly reduced by pairing it with a 3070. And again, we saw higher FPS when the 11600K was paired with a 3070. Control high preset 1080p, we actually saw the 11900K and 11600K take a lead over the 5950X by a 2% margin. In Rainbow Six Siege, very high preset, the 5950X was the clear winner, being 14% faster than the 11900K. However, the 11900K was around 9% faster than the 10900K. We wanted to spend some time validating a few of the benchmarks that Intel actually tested out themselves. Gears 5 1080p Ultra, we saw the 11900K fall behind the 5950X by 17%. What is interesting here is that the 11600K beat out the 11900K, however it is within margin of error. This is still making the 11600K look like a good value CPU. The 10900K is only falling behind the 11900K by about 2%. Grid 2019 is where we see another win for the 11th gen CPU, however this time it's the 11600K on top. All three Intel offerings beat out the 5950X, however the 11600K and 10900K beat out the 11900K by 4 to 7%. Please do keep in mind that this benchmark was handpicked by Intel, so it seems that this game is more optimized for Intel CPUs over AMD CPUs. Total War Dynasty is our last benchmark. Again, both of Intel's 11th gen CPUs were equal or greater than the 5950X, however, within margin of error. Now, we tested a large amount of games, some that we did not show, but ultimately the 5950X did beat out the 11900K in majority of games tested. What was very interesting to us was to see how close the 11600K was to the 11900K in an, a lot of our games, yet it costs much less. 
But before we talk about pricing, I wanted to actually overclock the 11900K to see how much more performance we could squeeze out of this CPU. To do this, I have my good friend Josh from Cooler Master bring over their ML360 Sub-Zero Cooler. The cooler uses thermoelectric cooling, or tech for short. The purpose of the loop is not for cooling the CPU, it's for actually cooling the tech itself. Now the cooler the hot side of the tech is, the cooler the bottom side will be, which inherently gives us a cooler CPU. This cooler does run at sub-zero temperatures, however, for our testing, we wanted to run it in cryo mode, which calculates a dew point and doesn't allow the cooler to run below that, which in turn allows us to run the cooler with no condensation. This is all controlled through Intel's cryo cooling technology. It was pretty amazing seeing CPU temperatures drop to below zero degrees on something that is more affordable than say a phase change unit, which it could be compared to. We tried multiple motherboards for our testing. Our first motherboard had no BIOS updates since launch, so it was very unstable for our testing. We could not push the CPU above 5.1 gigahertz, even with 1.4 volts. Our second motherboard is the Asus Maximus Hero 13. It did have multiple BIOS updates since launch, so it was actually a lot more stable. We managed to push the CPU to 5.2 gigahertz at 1.3 volts, but we could not push it any further. This, however, does not mean that the 11900K is a bad overclocker. While we were expecting to get 5.3 to 5.4 gigahertz or cores, it simply wasn't the case. We didn't get silicon lottery and ours was a bad overclocker. We actually know of multiple occasions of 5.3 to 5.4 being achieved underwater, but it just wasn't our lucky day. I also think that as the platform matures a bit more, we'll see more performance out of this CPU. With that being said, we didn't want to have all of our days of testing go to waste here. So I wanna share a couple of benchmarking results with you guys anyway to show you guys the performance increase. And I'm curious, what results are you guys currently getting with your CPU overclocks? We ran Cinebench R20 and achieved the score of 6,184. This is about 4% faster than our 11900K at stock. We wanted to try the overclock on a CPU intensive benchmark. Rainbow Six Siege 1080p achieved 452 FPS as opposed to the 437 FPS with no overclock. This again was around a 4% improvement. We touched on how these CPUs are still bottlenecking the high-end RTX series cards, so we wanted to see if the overclock could give us some even bigger performance gains. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was actually our best example of this, where our simple overclock saw a 7% gain in performance. On to power and thermals. We wanted to test extreme cases and average cases on both the 11th gen CPUs. For our tests, I test the 11900K on a 240mm all-in-one cooler, as well as a dual 360 loop, which was saturated by an RTX 3090 as well. Now this will allow users to compare our results against what you might be running at home. The 11900K paired with our 240mm all-in-one cooler hit an average of about 73 degrees and pulled around 215 watts in our blender run. Our clocks never thermal throttled and stayed at 4800 megahertz. Prime 95 is a worst case scenario and everyday tasks will never stress the CPU to this extreme. We saw the 11900K at around 85 degrees which caused thermal throttling taking the CPU down to 4600 megahertz. On our dual 360 radiator setup, we saw an average of 67 degrees, which was six degrees cooler than the 240 radiator loop. Power stayed at around 210 watts and speed stayed at 4,800 megahertz. Prime 95 again did the thermal throttle once we hit 85 degrees, but this time because of the improved cooling, we only went down 100 megahertz instead of the two to 300. Our power peaked at 263 watts. Our 11600K handled the 240 millimeter radiator very well. In Blender, we saw 60 degrees on average with the CPU only pulling 147 watts. Despite the high temperatures on Prime 95, the CPU was able to maintain 4600 megahertz on all cores and we saw the power consumption shoot up to 225 watts. So here's the reason why we waited a few days to release this video after launch. We all know hardware is going very crazy right now. MSRP really doesn't mean much in terms of a new launch. I wanted to see what things were actually being sold for. As you can see here, despite the 11900K being $74 over MSRP, it is still sold out. 
Even all of the bundles are sold out. The cheapest we could find the 11900K for was $550, which is $10 above MSRP. But as we could see, it is sold out. If the GPU trend is anything to go by, then it wouldn't surprise me if these prices went up as well. With its current market price at $550, the closest AMD CPU I could find to it is the Ryzen 9 5900X. In majority of games, the 5900X and the 5800X are outperforming the 11900K and they are equal or cheaper in value. So I can't really recommend the 11900K. On average, we only saw a minimal performance increase over the 10900K, so it's very hard to recommend this new CPU. The 11600K, however, is one that I can recommend. That's if its pricing stays as is. The 11600K can be picked up for $270, which competes directly with AMD's 5600X at $299. Both CPUs trade blows in gaming, however, for productivity, I'd still go with the AMD 5600X. If pricing stays as is, and all you want to do is gaming, then the 11600K might be the CPU for you. Times are very interesting for hardware and people are going to buy up whatever they can get their hands on, even if it's not the best option. We've already seen 11900Ks out of stock everywhere, yet according to the numbers, there are better options. I could only see pricing going up from here, but for now, we're just going to have to wait. Anyway, that pretty much does it for us. Hopefully, we can go out and purchase some more CPUs for some more direct comparisons, especially when there's rumors of another Intel launch coming up later this year, hopefully not on 14 nanometer anymore. So it's gonna be fairly interesting. Now, as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please leave them down in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing. I'm very interested to know if you guys want us to continue to do reviews like this as well. If you'd like to support us, Patreon and YouTube channel membership links are in the video description. And I'll leave a couple of videos to the side for you guys to check out as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next one.